Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Lands, who are bringing you your top stories, making the headlines in Israel. And you know we do this every Monday to Thursday. So let's take a look at the top stories. We have been speaking about tension in Jerusalem, especially uh, around the situation on the Temple Mount that happened on Friday. But last night, the IAF struck targets in the Gaza Strip in response to rockets that were fired from 10 uh, terror entities within the Strip towards Israeli targets. The Iron Dome did intercept rockets. Now, the IDF have confirmed that terrorists within the Gaza Strip did fire an anti-aircraft missile towards Israeli jets. Meanwhile, tensions continue on the Temple Mount. Earlier today, rioters apparently barricaded themselves inside the mosque. This is a holy site and played recordings of the rocket uh, sirens. Earlier today as well, the clashes broke out between troops and Palestinians in the city of Nablus. Apparently, young writers set fire to various rubber tires. Now, yesterday, a bus was pelted with rocks on its way to the old city. This is a bus that was filled mostly with Jewish women and children and Jewish men walking down to the Wailing Wall or to the Kotel for Bekat Kohanim, which is the blessing of the high priests, which takes place during this time of Cholam Oed Pesach and also Cholam Oed Sukkot were assaulted by Palestinians. The United Nations Security Council is going to convene today to discuss the ongoing unrest between Israelis and uh, Palestinian writers in the old city. I mean, nothing gets the UNSC moving at warp speed than just the very mention of Israel. But uh, we will be keeping you updated as the situations unfold. Meanwhile, police have banned a flag parade that was uh, requested by the organization MTETSU because of the ongoing tension. Now, yesterday we brought you the story that Jordan's foreign minister had summoned the Israeli ambassador for a dressing down over the situation on the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The ambassador is out of the country at the moment. And uh, the foreign minister also reiterated his support for Palestinians. Now, of course, this did not go down well with our foreign minister as well as our prime minister. And Prime Minister Bennett responded yesterday saying we expect all uh, people not to buy into the lies and not to encourage violence against Jews and that Israel is doing everything that we can to ensure calm and that all faiths are able to observe their religious rites and rituals in peace. Yesterday, another important conversation took place, this time between Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority president, and Russian President Vladimir Putin. According to sources in Ramallah, the Russian president is said to have reiterated his support for the Palestinians and criticized Israeli actions around the Temple Mount. The two leaders also spoke about mediation efforts with regards to Ukraine. Meanwhile, uh, it's the situation is starting to get a bit tense between Israel and Russia. Yesterday, we brought you the story that the foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, summoned Israel's ambassador to Moscow for us a dressing down uh, due to Israel's support for the resolution that would suspend Russia from the United Nations Human Rights Council, as well as Israel's condemnation of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Well, added to the growing tension is the demand by Vladimir Putin that Prime Minister Bennett, or rather Israel, hands over with immediate effect control of the Alexander Nevsky the church in the old city of Jerusalem. It does have quite a, a, an interesting history. It was uh, owned by the Ottoman Empire when they controlled the area, but uh, when the Ottoman Empire 
empire collapsed, it was seen as part of the great Russian empire. Now, of course, the great Russian empire doesn't exist anymore, but uh, Putin said to Bennett that this is alleged to have been promised to him by former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who had reiterated that this is a, a very delicate situation and not a matter for the courts to decide ownership. But if this does continue, if this pressure does continue by Putin towards Israel, this could spark a diplomatic row. And finally, we now go to outer space. I mean, who could blame us with all the tensions happening here on Earth? Wouldn't you want to be our second ever astronaut, Eitan Stibber, aboard the International Space Station? I know I would. Well, not only did he celebrate uh, Lila Seda or Seda evening on board the International Space Station, but he was scheduled to make his return down to Earth today. However, due to weather conditions, his uh, return will be delayed until tomorrow and we wish him a safe a journey but uh, ah, I wouldn't blame him if he wants to stay up there for uh, another while it seems to be much more peaceful on board the International Space Station. Now, if you're looking for good reading material, this Chola Moed, look no further than our website at www.layoftheland.online all our archived articles on a whole range of topics, our Israel briefs, uh, interesting bits and pieces can all be found there. Or check us out on Facebook, join our growing community there by giving us a like or a follow and don't forget to share our content when you see it. It's the only way we get to counteract the lies in the mainstream media about Israel. And uh, if you're viewing this on YouTube, please consider clicking on that red subscribe button. The more subscribers we have, the more exposure we get, the more we are able to counter the rhetoric in the mainstream media. And if you're on Twitter, follow us on Lay of the Land with the Digit 5. I'm Rowley Marks. Thank you for watching. This is the Israel Brief. And don't forget to join me again tomorrow as I bring you those top stories making headlines right here in Israel.